The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'm also the author of the Opening Call Daily Newsletter. Very comprehensive newsletter. Goes out almost every day. And uh, this is what I'm looking at. In the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for the most obvious low bar to start, start counting the, the peaks, the higher peaks. And each higher peak is alphabetized. Uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, and we can go all the way to a letter G. More importantly, it's that fourth highest peak, A, B, C is three, D is four, that fourth highest peak where other things can happen. We're always looking either for the arc or the arch formation or the cup formation or a U formation. You can get a combination of the three, straight line down, straight line up, arch, cup, you can get a combination, and that looks like a lowercase h or reverse y. Red in the h's um, case, because if it takes out the left side low, it can keep going down. And on the right side, if it takes out the left side high, it can keep going up. So very simple. Four peaks is really what we look for. Then we look for recycling higher, but it's that fourth highest peak. And we're looking for a cup or an arch formation, or maybe a combination. So let's make it as simple as possible. What do we see here? We see in the Dow, we see a big arch formation, and it comes all the way from 27,306 at a peak D with a little doji can. I love to look at those signs. And it comes all the way down to 25,743 on the 3rd of October. Rallies, and it goes to peak A, pulls back. Peak B, pulls back. Peak C at 27,120, just 180 points, 186 points off the all-time high. Uh, uh, no, it's a little more, of course, the all-time high was there in July, 27,398. But it can't make it. And because on Thursday, IBM had just a horrible, horrible day, it failed to get that 27,121 or higher for that leg D. So we missed that peak D, and Friday's action was terrible. Not only did you have IBM, you had Johnson & Johnson. Not only did you have Johnson & Johnson, you had Boeing. Look at Boeing right now. Boeing is down yet again, 12 points at 331. It was at 391, 60 points higher in September. This is, I am actually in awe of how the Dow is holding well at this particular point. With this kind of bad news, um, hey, I think this is pretty impressive, right? Even though we've got those Ds and a peak C1, C2, that's the alternative count in the Chapman wave. But wait a minute, look at the S&P. S&P right now is under the high that was made uh, three days ago of 3,008.29. Let me put that in, make it in gray, 3,008.29. Make it the plus sign. I always put a plus sign on top of a D because it says that's where you've got to be careful. And I'm making this light, light, because we just wanted there's information for me. There's no sign yet. So you've got a buy mode in the oh, disappeared. Let me put it back again. You've got a buy mode in the S&P. The MACD is expanding. It isn't anywhere, cl anywhere close as high as it was back at 3,021 on the 19th of September. But wait a minute. The stochastics at 91, over 80% is good. Over 90% is very good. Over 95% is really good. So this is in the very good uh, um, range. The MACD of the weekly chart hasn't crossed positive, and that's the reason why I've been saying this is a high-level consolidation trapped between the parameters in the uh, case of the S&P's between about 3,021, 3,027 was the all-time high, but 3,021, and about two, let's call it in the shorter term, uh, 2,940. And it's just kind of stuck. And if this is going to be moving very sharply, Today would have been an opportunity to um, 
to see some kind of weakness and say, what do we have? It's up 15. The Dow should be up 130 points. So there's something wrong with this picture. And what is wrong with the picture? It's that because we are still digesting huge gains. If you look at this monthly chart, we've only got just over a week to go. What is today? 20. Fourth of thir well, what is the date? Uh, 31st is Thursday, one of the few times we haven't ended the month on uh, the weekend. So 31st is uh, Thursday, so you'll have one day of the new month, November. Now, what's really, uh, Bells, when an instrument makes a peak D, what is the next indicator or tool that you use that typically indicates that higher peaks are to come? Uh, or instead, a potential top is present. A bank D, average, cross, crossover, what it is. So, uh, Steve, uh, St good question, Steve. Steve Rhodes asked the question. And Steve, of course, has done his own notation of the Chapman Wave methodology. My only com complaint when I've, I've had it done, uh, um, so I've got, in fact, on this particular program, I've got, I can, I can find a low and then count the peaks. But what I, uh, the big problem is this. What happens, and here's the question, Steve, so like, yeah, we've got a peak D, and then we went to an E, F, and even a G. We just missed making the D, we went to a G. So I have a methodology that says that you've got to look at certain indicators, and those indicators are just a heads up to say there's a possibility that in this particular round, you won't get a recycle of an instant restart, but it'll just be a continuous lettering going to a G, and G is where you've got to be careful. But I can't give you an absolute, if I had an absolute fixed rule, I would have all done it all, my notation would have been perfect by now. It's, there are just a couple of options, and those options set in place, they trigger in the automated Chapman Wave methodology too many alternatives. I do it by eye. I just do it because I've done it so many times. I'm not able right now just to give you an exact uh, um, picture other than to say, keep watching the MACD. The MACD is a big part of it. However, what I will say is that in this particular instance, in the S&P, we've got a D, but the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is still very strong, and the stochastic is very strong. So now I'm going to do something else. I want to show you the QQQ because it's the same story. The QQQ is also MACD is very strong. Stochastic is holding steady, flat at 89%. We had a sharp pullback from a, from a letter D, a uh, leg D to a peak D, and yet here we are, an inside bar moving towards the upper part of the bar, still with strength. So uh, this is a case where I haven't given all, an all-out sell signal because I think that we're looking at um, I internal strength. Now, I'm going to do this to show some of the techniques that I like to use and my, my subscribers know. You remember this one where I said that the Dow started to give signals way back. Um, that was in April. We got that a day before. We got the exact top. Um, there was a sell signal. Uh, we went short. Um, and I call it bad news cloud cover. You need a bad news cloud cover, and then it can take time. And there were enough indications in the moving averages to say, no, you're not going to go straight down. You're going to go sideways first and then plunge. And it took 10 bars before we plunged down. Then we did exactly the same thing. We got this seven points from the exact top back in July. Another sell signal, bad news cloud cover, but it took 13 balls before it broke down. And then the one right here, uh, back that was in September the 12th, that was also, it took 14 days before it really broke down. I'll talk about it when we get back. It's a process. I'll be back. Thousand up 30. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Yes, so we're looking at um, the Dow of 21, S&P is at 15. Obviously, that huge discrepancy between the uh, three Dow stocks that have been so weak and the rest, which have been quite strong, actually, not all, but a, a chunk. This is, a, this is a very interesting situation right now. We've got the Ds, and we had a D before. Look at this. On my left side chart, the daily, look at the QQ, NDX 100 on the 12th of September. It goes to a leg D. The following day, it pulls back with a lower high from the 194.71 uh, high of the 12th of September. And yet the MACD was still very strong. Stochastic was still very strong. So there's a process involved, and I always like to say that it's the technique of the Chapman wave itself, those Ds, etc., that really give you a, a little uh, insight into market turns, because we've managed to uh, actually pinpoint a chunk of the turns this year. But at the same time, once you miss it, it means you can't just jump in the very next day. Because if you identify that the technicals that you're using are still showing strength, it means you're going to get another opportunity. And you might get an opportunity at a better price, a worse price, it doesn't matter. But you are, your risk reward says it's better to wait. Yes, you can miss it again. And yeah, for my subscribers, they know we can miss by a penny. Um, but I, I'm kind of strict about what to do and where to get in. That's just the best way I can do it all these decades. Uh, you know, when people, when you have the responsibility of having people get into the market, um, you want to know that there's risk reward and people do kind of take you at your word. So I try my best to stick to whatever I say and whatever we, we've got printed in the opening call newsletter in my, in my, in my uh, uh, final page. That is the trader's corner. And um, so we missed by a penny today, a $5 something stock, which is up 2% off the low that I wanted to buy it at with one penny. Just missed it by a penny. But I felt very strongly that it was one of those cases, yes, we could just dive in. But in this particular market, I didn't want to take that chance because if it did suddenly pull back, the risk 
percentage-wise on a $5 stock when it's only dropping 30 cents or something is huge. I mean, it's a big percentage. So I, I didn't want to take that risk, and, and we'll have others. I have these all the time. We we're able to pinpoint them. Um, it's, it's the entry that's so important. Um, and maybe we'll still get into this one because it's only in leg B. But at the same time, we had the same thing happen on Friday. We missed by just a few cents on a stock um, – that I think is really a nice infrastructure type stock. And we must buy a few cents. And it too is up very nicely from that Friday low to where it is right now. Um, and it's up a percent already today. That's okay. We get enough. Um, I, you know, what can I say? I just, I need to be very, I need to be somewhat conservative. And I chose now, I do have some subscribers who know my work very well. They look at it and they say, yep, I. I I'm going to have a little bit more of a leeway in my entry point because this is my own position. I've decided to take the position. I'm prepared to take it a little bit away from Basil's entry point. Therefore, I have that responsibility. That's fine. I get emails all the time saying, yep, we're in, and what should we do now? Then I try to follow it for them. But uh, I just wanted to mention that I am kind of strict with these things. And I know that over the, over the year, as we go through the year, we more than make up these little losses. Sometimes not. Sometimes one just gets away. We had a most beautiful stock that gave a 10% dividend. I had a fairly top, tight stop. It was like a 2.5%, 3% stop. And it was a lowish price stock, about 18. Now it's at 20.75. And, and that's capital gain plus dividends. So we kind of missed out there. That was a little stupid because if you have a 10% dividend, I should have had much bigger, a greater um, at least I must have had a, a wider stop. That was, that was silly. And we had a chance to get in, but didn't get in. So, okay. Now, what I am looking at here is I just wanted to go through this quickly because we've got a whole chunk of questions coming in. Um, look, gold is underneath for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For eight of the last nine sessions, it's been underneath the 14-period the exponential moving average. That's, you know... That's just saying that there is weakness, but it's not it's not the kind of weakness that sees the kind of drop that went from the 1540s down to the 1460s um, in late September, early October. This is a different one. This is just saying there's some kind of internal weakness. It's not allowing uh, follow through to the upside. But it's also holding. Look at this beautiful trend line. I love using trend lines. Look how easy it is. I take the low in gold as a continuous contract from the 1st of October. In this case, it's 1465. Now, this gets smoothed out. So, this is the number that, as of today, that's the number we're looking at. And then it had one, two, three, four today again, four tests of this trend line. You remember what I like to do here is just to go, I make that pink, I make this green, and I say, this should be. The goals inside track propellant line or buy entry point. And if it doesn't act that way, then you've got to just be very careful and say, uh oh, watch out, because if that pink line breaks, now we're going to have the pattern of the H, two H's. And that says be careful because the next low of 1480 will be coming up. And then you just keep going step by step. So this is very important. Gold needs to close decisively, not once, but two out of three sessions, about 15, I'd say 1498 to 1504. That's the area you want to see it in. Okay? If you're looking at silver, silver is also a little bit weak today. Oops, it was weak earlier. Let me see where it is now. No, now it's up. Uh, 0 0.02 at 17.60. It was it was stronger than it was weaker. Now it's holding. It's also holding underneath the 14, the 14 period, the black line there, 40 period exponential moving average of both in the gold and the silver's case. The monthly chart says that that peak that was made in, in 1975, a week of the 5th of September, at peak E um, in the weekly chart of silver, says, hey, I, I drew the rectangle in and I said, we should see some kind of digestive phase after a spectacular move. Silver goes from 14, was about 1450, screams up to 19.75. Uh, that is impressive. That is very impressive. All right. Now, on a shorter term basis, I, I, I had to do this quickly. I wasn't actually trading this. Today. I had a lot of other things to do. So I just quickly notated it. This is a D, and that could be an A, an E slash A. And then this would be B, C, and that would be a D. And this could be a brand new start to a buy mode. So I'm going to do that right now. Fresh start. 
oh, I shouldn't have put the up arrow in because we're not over 80% in the stochastic. Just putting a plus sign in. And the plus sign says, good, this is an A. This is a new B. We're still within the rectangle formation. Remember, rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patience. Here we go, right there. Okay. And um, here's the... Um, I was going to say the weekly, but it's not. It's the 10 minutes. So this is a two-minute E-mini. This is the 10-minute. And I usually grab the outer, outer limits, and I go, great. I've got a rectangle formation. I'm not even going to go down to the bottom. I'm just saying there it is. The moment the E-mini goes above 3,004, it kind of breaks out. I think that there's internal strength. I think we're going to close quite nicely on the day. Hey, I could be wrong, <laughs> but I'm going to say that this is the way it looks right now. I love what's going on. I love the fact that there's, I mean, impeachment talk. There's everything going on. There's really a bad news event uh, unfolding, and yet this market is holding. Look at that, holding above the nine period moving average, holding above the 40 period moving average. I'm kind of impressed at the moment. Maybe yeah, by the end of the show, won't be. But I am right now. I'll be right back. Guys, of Chapman Tiger Traditions Hour. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let's just do this here. Um, you know, I always love to look at those peak Ds, and it, it doesn't mean to say that it only fails at a D. It can go higher to an E, an F, and even a G. But look at this. Here's the 10-minute bar of the e mini. Um, had a nice candle at about midnight last night, and then all of a sudden it goes to A, B, C, D, pulls back. A, B, C, alternate count, E, C, D, 
pulls back. A, a minus starts again, A, and then it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, pulls back to the 200 period. The pink line is the 200 period moving average. It's a 10 minute E mini. Now it goes A, B, and what do we have? We have, if I can just move that away, we've got, uh, let's see, 3003.25, and we just went to 3003.25. Let's see if we're able to move a little higher, move a little higher. That's going to be a C, but until you take out the high that was made at 20 to 10 this morning, it's time of 3003.75. That's your rectangle formation. That's your resistance area. As it goes nicely above that, that's a nice breakout. All right, so let's keep that there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me just show you something else here. So on the... On the uh, let me just move this away. I'll move that away. Now, you see in the Chapman Wave automated resistance points, look how nicely they've worked. 3,347, 3,295, 3,395. That's in the five minute. The two minute has 3,353. So there's a lot of resistance that it has to get to. It means that if it starts to go to 3,004.75, that's a breakdown. All of this becomes support. So that's how it's going to work here. Now let's go back to the uh, so GT. Thank you for the information. Yes, um, uh, where, where was it here? Fed 58.1 million billion repo. I mean that is really important. And the other aspect was that well, where were we? Just skipped a couple. IBM, WBA. So, yeah, Wal Walgreen uh, Boots Alliance. I always forget the alliance part. In fact, I even forget the boots. So this is WBA trading right now at um, down 72 cents at 54.68. It's in the lower range. It had a spectacular move. And I don't know why they, I mean, just the chart never looked like it should be a takeover. It should not be taking over anything. And look what happens. Takeover in the 90s. It goes all the way from the 90s, July of 2015. I think it was a year ago that it took it over. And now it's trading in the 50 area, 54. So uh, the whole digestive phase of a takeover usually takes quite a period. Uh, so watch out. Um, that's another negative for the Dow today. So now let me just see. I wanted to show you this because this is live. Yep, there it is. We're about to tie it. We're at 3,375. Pop, pop, pop. I want 3,004. Then I want 3,004.25. I need a break above there. I want to see it happen. I want it to happen. I want it to happen. And I want it to happen now. Oh, look at that. So this is leg C. This is gray C because it's under the previous high. The MACD is... Good. The stochastic is good at 81%. At I think there should be a push right now, right this second. Push, push, push. Everybody's watching. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, come on. Okay. 3,375, 50, going okay. once, going twice, 75, once, 50, twice, 50. Okay. All right. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, it'll do it, I'm sure. Okay. Next thing we're looking at, Dow's 48. I like that. Up 48. Um, yeah, IBM, WA, also components of the Dow are very important. Um, a question about the SMHs. So for us, for the subscribers, we're just kind of stepping aside. We made a G slash C. And what I said was, if, if there's another week uh, session today, that'll probably make it a G. But at this particular point, with all the others at a peak C or a D, I think there's going to be a little bit of room to go higher. So we had no, no trade whatsoever. I'm not sure. It might have been a good idea to do it as a trade, to try to get it as a long, like you could play three times long or something. I just didn't need that right now. There's just a lot going on. And I just needed to see that it was a good day today. And so far, the semiconductor um, SMH is up 215 at 124.25. I bet we broke above 40, right? Uh, see, yep, that's the other thing here. No. How can you take so long? How embarrassing in front of everybody like this. Oh, you'll do it. I know you'll do it. All right, good. Okay, so semiconductors, applied materials, applied materials trading right now up 96. It made a peak D just the other day, made a peak D when it had that big sharp pullback from the 52 area down to the 48 area in October, September to October, and then it went to a higher high, went to, all, it went to a, a new recovery high in leg E. 
in the weekly chart, all-time high 62.40 back in March of 2018, applied materials, AMAT, up 92 cents. Let's look at LAM Research, LRCX. LRCX is trading up nicely, up 5.66, oh, at 239.36. Made a peak D right there, 244.98. Anybody get the impression that that peak D is a kind of important? It doesn't mean, doesn't mean it happens every single time, but often now look, daily, weekly, and now we're only in leg C in the monthly. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so LAM Research is under the, the high of 244. I believe the all-time high was, let me just do this here, was 234.88 back in 2017, and now it's even higher than that. This is good action, LAM Research. Let's look at Intel. Intel INTC, 51.93. All-time high was back at 53.33, no, it wasn't, it was at 59, I remember. Yeah, 59.59 in April of 2019. Let me just type that in here, 59, do it again, 59, uh, where did I say April? 2019. Okay, so, so far, that's in place, and I'm going to make it red because it was an important uh, top. Okay, so what we're looking at is Intel is also up 0.57 at 51.95 INTC, and it's got a cup formation. It's extending out. Oh, 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 oh! I love when you can do this. I thought I was missing it before, but now we're going to go left side, right side, price time match. Click new parallel, make it green. See where that takes us to green right there. And that takes us to still October, October the 24th. Nah, can't do that by then. I don't think so. So let me just move this away. We got this. Yep. So that's the way we're looking at it. I'm going to have to put that in there. Put this in here. I did it to the first one, but the second one. Oh, I don't know. Well, it's, it's what, 24th. What's the day? 21st. Six sessions to go. Monday week? Uh, no. Friday. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. It means it has to have, oh, that means it's earnings, any earnings of, of the semiconductors this week, if there is, maybe it will push all the semiconductors higher. But so far, the weekly chart says, hey, cup formation with a little with a deep handle, it could just hang around you. It's going to take a little while to get to the 54s. That's the way I'm looking at it. Next thing I want to look at was dollar TNX.x. Look. This is now in leg B, leg C, I'm sorry, leg C, I believe. I need to check that out. 1510, 1510, 1529, 1510. Wow. So this is in a buy mode. We've got the we've got the 10-year yield now in a buy mode. So if it's in a buy mode, it means that the yields are going higher. There's a chance that the market itself will follow and move higher as well. So A. B, C, as money comes out of bonds, there you go, out of bonds as bonds slide and into equities, back into equities. Isn't that interesting? Oh, please, I did that. Yeah, so the TL, TNX, the 10 year is acting quite nicely now. It's still in a range, but acting quite well. Right if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So we went to 3004. There it is. Leg C. This is the big move now. You want to see 3006.60, uh, 0.50 uh, in the next hour and a half. And that's going to say great. Now, most of the damage is done for the day. And we can see some positives. Talking about positives, we're going to go straight to Scott in Safety Harbor. Hi, Scott. How are you? I like that word, safety harbor. I hope it is safe. Uh, <laughs> U.S. deal. U.S. deal. Uh, we'll have a look at it again. It's very perplexing. But as you said, there seems to be a, a base that's developed. So, Scott, the, the whole thing about it is that I believe it's one of those stocks that the damage that has been done going from the 46 area, um, actually, yeah, 46, 47 area down to the nines, says that now investors have become very, very disenchanted with it because every rally that looked like, oh, this is it, turned out to be, oh, this is not it. So what we're really looking for now are fresh buyers. And I would look for fresh buyers it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be you're either in it or you're not because this is screaming to the upside. And this time, the monthly chart is starting to get off the 6% uh, in the stochastic area. It, I, until United States Steel, which is trading right now at 10.82, up 10 cents, unless I can see it in a monthly chart where the stochastic has now started to move into the 12 or 14 percent area to me that'll be the biggest that'll be the biggest booster that you can get so that's going to be a long way you off know, Basil, so, what you just said was very interesting because not one but two but three different people i've tried to get back into the x were hurt so bad they're like no 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 i don't want to talk about it and i'm like well now's your chance to no no i don't want to make up for any i don't want to talk about x so it's interesting that you said that, and, and though, these, of course, are amateurs, but I wouldn't doubt if, like you said, there's professional traders that, that have that same feeling. So, so there, what I'm saying to you is that when it takes off the next time and doesn't back off, now you've got those people that said, oh, man, I, have, I know the feeling because we've had some stocks like it myself, that you turn around and you say, oh, now am I going to chase it? Now if I chase it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to dive again. And what happens, it just keeps moving and moving. But I think two things have to happen. One is you need, 
But I meant to do it over the weekend. I just didn't have time. I was so busy with my charts and other things, and I was out out of town. But what I, I, I want to do is take a little time. I actually, for the first time in, in a while, I want to go through the, um, you know, I want to go through a couple of the steel company, just to look at the technicals, the books. I want to see what's going on with the earnings, et cetera. Because when United States Steel starts to see internal, a, a lot of internal improvement, that's from the United States. And then, because I'm starting to see some of the uh, international markets improving somewhat, Wood, the iShares, Timber and Forestry ETF is improving, high grade copper is improving a little bit. So when I start to see that there's a chance that you could get overseas buying, and then maybe China starts to come on board again. I don't know if that's the case. I think it's going to be a big winner. But before it becomes a big winner, I need to see some technical action. Now, for you, these little trading balances, you can see each one's getting weaker and weaker. So we're right in an area where I would even say to you within the next, what is today? Today's Monday. I would say by the, the 5th or 6th of November, probably... That's where we'll see a lot more because if U.S. Steel breaks 993, the key support that it's that it's had over the last week and a half, closes under 9.60 at any stage, it's going to take a lot more. But if it just keeps a sideways frustrating move up, there's going to be a move. I would even say that for anyone interested in a stock like this because you have um, your own analysis and your own analysis is positive but you haven't seen the stock move yet you could even have like a buy stop at, at ten dollars and maybe eleven dollars and 25 cents why higher because if it actually starts to move up there i think you're going to get some traction and you'll have an opportunity you can get in with a tight stop and then you'll see. So you miss the best move. That's one way. The other is just to do what you're doing. Have patience. I think the way you're analyzing it, every time it has a pop-up, you just take your money, you build up a kitty, because the next time that you see much better signs, you want to be able to put in a position that you can keep, even if it's just a small position as a stock that you're going to hold. And now you're going to play. Every, you're going to just continue what you're doing because you have a core position that you think has the chance for an intermediate term bounce. I just think it's it's it has been a little early. Now I think we're really at the point where we're going to see. Does United States Steel? I'm going to put you know Alcoa not in the same category as aluminum has has done that. It's had a very frustrating decline from the same area 63 all the way down to uh, in this case I think it was down to about seven sixteen seventeen dollars. Now it's trading at twenty one. It's a little bit better chart pattern, but I suspect that U.S. Steel is going to do the same thing. Before you know it, boom, it will suddenly move. But it's the timing. So I would just say to you, keep building a position. Just keep building on your short-term trades. And then at some point, say to yourself, okay, somewhere between maybe may take a number between $10.10 and $9.80, and I'm going to start a position. I'm not trading that position. That's just a position I'm holding because I know at some time I'll always be able to get that part of it back because it always bounces back into the 11s. So that's a position that I have for, for a longer term. But short term, just, just keep looking at it. And I, what, should, do, what do you use for a very short term indicator to get in? What time frame? My, my indicator to get in is around 1060. But I, I'll tell you the truth today. I was I got in I got a couple more thousand at the 1090 because it showed so much strength that I I was just thinking this was going to be the time up. But what you said a few minutes ago is is exactly what I'm doing. I've got you know thousands that I that I move real quickly, but then I've right. got 3,000 that I just keep so I won't feel bad if it does happen to take that you know 13 14 dollar jump. So I think that's the way people ought to trade it. But don't. Don't if you have a limited amount of money to work with, take you can't marry it. No, right. Take yeah. and that's what I do. I you, you, it's like Jim Cramer always says, you're never gonna you're gonna feel real bad if you miss it, but you're gonna feel real real bad if you didn't take those profits and it goes down and it has jumped down what seven times now. And if I hadn't taken those twenty five cent thirty cent and of course oh, that one day been, I made yeah. a fortune when it went up a one twelve uh, profits. Uh, but see, so many people when they see that big jump, they're like, "Oh, geez, it's 1220. 
It's going to 15. No, people, so, take Scott, the profit, please. You've got to do it just the way you have. Don't think about what anybody else is doing. Just keep doing what you're doing, and at some point, you're really going to be rewarded because I believe that United States Steel is not going broke. I think they're going to, they'll turn the corner at some point. Um, you're right. It's a well, great American company. Bad, and I think, you know, what you said something, you said something about the public perception. It's just the public perception right now. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals at all. It's just the way people perceive it. And, and the thing is, if U.S. Steel goes to the president, has any problem at all, just because of the name, and this sounds totally ridiculous, but true. Just because of the name, there's no way that the president's not going to do everything he can to keep U.S. Steel up and running. I think you could be right on that. But hey, Scott, thank you very much for the call. Always appreciate it. Speak to you soon. Thank you, Bob. So, folks, the Dow is down 59. Let's see that E-mini, I think, is breaking. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A question I had you know, of, of the uh, cannabis stocks ready to go green. Well, MJ, the alternate harvest, yeah, it's starting to form some kind of a base. For the very first time, we're getting a signal that it's forming a base. Are they already? I just don't know if they're ready individually. But this is just saying that the whole area of 18 should be some kind of support and could chop around here for a little bit before it gets moving. Um, yes, and another question was a particular GTBIF, uh, GTBIF, GTBIF. Um, is this ready? Green Thumb Industries. Uh, you know, I just think it's trying to build a base at $9. Um, I thought it was a different stock. I'm sorry, CRL. 
Oh, it is a different stock. C R L C R L B F. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And what I'd say is in my news yesterday, I had a stock, the one that we missed by a penny, now it's up two and a half percent. But I said it's a better five dollar stock than the C R L B F, which is Cresco Labs Inc. So um, yeah. Now the other thing that I want to look at just real quickly is UMH. Uh, UMH. That when we looked at the other day. Oh man, this is a beautiful. Oh, I said the other day, look good. But it just didn't pull back enough. It, oh man, leg D in the daily, leg C in the weekly. Oh, this is looking outstanding. UMH properties, good eye peaky in the dead. Okay, we've got a moment to go before I hand you over to Steve Rose and it goes to Dave Dave White, and then you've got Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll actually, be back tomorrow at 10 o'clock as well to be with Tommy Jr. So the Dow's are 51. What I am looking at here is that within the context of the markets, there are individual stocks. And we've got no shorts right now. I like what I'm seeing on the shorter term. I am also getting a little cautious because I think we're kind of overbought in many areas. So I think that you, you need to have... Um, you need to be able to consider this a rotational market that's in a rotational correction on the upside right now. And at the same time, there are stocks that are looking really good. There are some stocks that are looking really poor. So this is a this is stock time picking. And as far as shorting is concerned, I think keep in mind, remember this little study I showed you right here of looking at the moving averages and seeing where they're about to cross over. I think we've got a little time before we have another big dive to the downside in the Dow. Meantime, there's a residual strength which needs to be resolved to the upside, that is. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Have a great day.